All right. Welcome, everybody, to episode four of SFF Addicts for our panel featuring fan Addict writers, where we're discussing the difference between YA and adult science, fan- science fiction and fantasy and comparing the two, kind of getting a feel for what YA is from each of our perspectives, and then relating it to our experiences with adult science fiction and fantasy. And joining me today, I have fan Addicts Paige. How are you, Paige? Hello. I'm great. I'm excited to talk about YA and an adult SFF. Right on. And then we also have Tori. Hi. How are you, Tori? I am good. How are you guys? We're good. And then we have Justin, Southern Comfort Gross. How are you, my friend? I'm doing very well. And uh, just uh, to make sure everybody knows, uh, there's a very loud beagle in the background, uh, so she may howl intermittently. She's the, the podcast mascot, so it's all there good. There we go. It's all good. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll start with uh, Paige. Can you just um, introduce yourself a little bit, say something about yourself and um, why you're here? Ooh. Um, it's exciting. Uh, no. <laughs> um, so I, I blog under the name Words of a Page, which I'm quite proud of, the, uh, of that. Young me was was on it on the puns um i've been blogging for eight or nine years now um started out blogging with ya which is why this panel is really interesting to me um because i joined fanfi i think in march this year um and kind of started reading a lot more widely in the in the adult fiction section um and i still read a lot of ya but to be honest i kind of have almost forgotten that a lot of these things are classed as that so I just find it really interesting the difference between these uh these genres. So I'm looking forward to hopefully hearing what everyone else has to talk about as well. Right on. Thank you for joining us. And Tori, introduce yourself a little bit and tell us why you're here talking about YA. Well, um I am an avid YA reader, pretty much my entire shelf is YA. So um, I like to think that I, I, I wouldn't call myself an expert, but I'm well read in YA. Um, I write YA. My first book is technically YA, although it does tackle some more adult themes. It is uh, generally YA, and I just have always adored reading it and i have a lot to say about why <laughs> so i might talk a lot this one it's all good we're happy to have you here and justin what about you tell us about yourself and why you're here chatting YA with us uh sure so i'm probably one of the least read on the panel for YA. um i think i when i started reading i went like from middle grade directly to adult um you know i started reading adult fiction when I was very young um but recently uh since I've been with Tori she's introduced me to some some YA um and uh I I do think it's interesting that there's a difference because there's a lot of uh, or there's a lot of similarities between the genres um I'm interested to, to discuss that a bit yeah well actually jumping into that um we can kind of go around and everybody say what YA means to them and then also what your first introductions were to YA whether it's you know general fiction or fantasy and sci-fi um just to give a little bit of background on our journeys as readers so we'll start with Paige uh well I don't know what my first introduction to YA was um I think I read a lot of my my mum's book collection as I was growing up um so I read horrors like Graham Masterton, which are very much adult um, books. Um, there's a lot of like dark themes and stuff. So I want to say I was probably, I don't know how old I was, but I was a teenager when Twilight came out. And I remember that was just, it swept the school. Everyone was reading it. Everyone was talking about it. You know, we were trying to work out who was where and what book so we could discuss it. Um, and then obviously The Hunger Games came out kind of while I was still a teenager. Um, so those were like my big introductions to the young adult fiction and I never really realized that that's what it was called um kind of just it was hyped up everyone was reading it the films were coming out um so it kind of just accidentally started reading YA um 
I think they were my they were my first ones that I really remember as being like the hype, the exciting like books to be reading as a teenager. Um, and obviously they're still quite in the collective consciousness, so quite popular, popular book. And what does YA mean to you? Oh, God. I think it's the same as kind of all all books and all reading. It was just that escape, that kind of seeing yourself reflected, especially when you're younger, seeing yourself reflected in these teenage characters and their struggles and and the things that they go through. Like obviously, you know, a lot of these are like, especially in in like SFF, they're they're magical or they belong to a certain faction, which which you don't get as a kind of real human being. Um, but it's just seeing other people struggle with kind of growing up and like first loves and kind of all those firsts that YA tends to touch upon. Um, so just I don't know that that feeling of belonging that you can sometimes find in in young adult. Mm-hmm. And Justin, what about you? Um, first introduction, right? Yeah. Um, first introduction was I guess the Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve Pichol, I think is her name. Um, which is a book that Tori read and raved about. Uh and so I had to read it as well. And and it was very good. Um and that was, like I said, very fairly recently, um, as far as in the last couple of years um that I read that. Um What about the books that that you read growing up that had an impact on you? Not necessarily if you if you were to to consciously classify it as YA or middle grade or something like that. You know the really, I guess the only books that I read um, that weren't like adult fantasy would have been like uh, Harry Potter. I guess you know Harry Potter came out when I was like ten. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I started reading that, um, which I think starts out as middle grade and then in, probably ends up in YA toward, you know, the, the end of the series. Yeah. Um, other than that, um, like I said, I, I think I went pretty much directly from middle grade directly into adult fantasy. Yeah. And now that you're jumping into YA as an adult, what, what has your impression be, been and, and what does YA what does YA kind of mean to you? This you know, I, I I think I started out very against YA uh, and, and had the feeling that I guess my first introduction to the classification of the genre as young adult was through Twilight. And so <laughs> I had a very negative uh, uh, view of the genre as a whole because of it. You know, I thought it was all melodrama and poor, poorly written and uh, just for children, which which obviously I know now isn't the case, but um, now my experience with it is 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 just that it's a lot. It's almost like um like a breath of fresh air when when you read a YA, you know, like back to back to uh, like an adult fantasy or or even grim dark or something like that. It's a lot lighter, you know. That uh, there's always going to be certain themes of. Uh, almost nostalgic at this point um, as far as like um, uh, growing into yourself and and becoming uh, you know who you are as a person Mm -hmm. no I totally agree and Tori I'd like to hear your perspective as well what was your introduction to YA and what has the the genre come to mean to you Well, um, I have a couple of things I want to touch on. Something that Paige said uh, made me think that, you know, YA has really exploded as a genre in like just the last 10 years, you know, since the launch of Twilight and The Hunger Games and um, maybe even Divergent. Um, Harry Potter was kind of like the real, I'm not sure of like the, the order in which Twilight and the later Harry Potter books came out. Twilight came out in like 2005 and then, um, you know, the Hunger Games came out in like 2008. So just in that short span of time, and this is something that Justin mentioned, YA was kind of thought as for young girls. And typically anything that gets popular and is aimed at young girls is 
often seen as less than. Um, and you know, that's a, it's a whole like social concept that, you know, young girls are, are, are flighty are, are, you know, what have you, but you know, I won't, I won't get into all that, but YA kind of was initially aimed at least in the beginning at that audience. And so, you know, like Justin said, how, you know, he didn't want to read it because it was for young people and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I think that has a lot to do with how YA has changed over, you know, just the last decade. Um, YA kind of, well, for me, it's, it gave me, it gave me a voice when I didn't have one. Um, there's such, there's such a gratifying, like, feeling of (sighs) gratification. I I guess what I really wanted to get at was that finding a sense of self in YA was what was so gratifying. Um, you know, as, as a kid and as a teenager, I never had a place where I, I, I felt like I could truly be myself because you know in a small town I don't want to say that there's like a stat I don't want to call it a status quo because that's cliche and overused but I mean that's kind of what it is especially in high schools and middle schools because if you don't find a group of people that you can align yourself with you'll just float through like you you won't have any kind of interaction because if you don't find a place to quote unquote belong then you just you have these people who are just cruel to you and i i i experienced a lot of that even though i did have you know a couple different groups, I guess. Um, but anyway, the, the, the point of all that is that YA kind of, you know, especially Twilight and the Hunger Games, because those were the first two real big popular titles. Um, like when I, when I read that Bella Swan was clumsy, I was like, Finally. Someone I'm clumsy it. too. <laughs> I am so clumsy. Like he wouldn't take me hiking the other day, or he wouldn't take not the other day. He wouldn't take me hiking to a place that he really wants to go because he's afraid I'll fall off a mountain. Like, I, I had a I had a full blown panic attack, like thinking about it in bed at night, just imagining her twisting an ankle and just falling directly off the cliff. That's like really and like when I like read really that morbid, but at the same time, it's like <laughs> you know her, so it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. And like when I read that Bella like fell on ice and stuff, like my mind was blown because I had never seen another clumsy person in any of the books I've ever read. And it was like, oh my god, someone sees me. But you know that that's just kind of, that kind of identification is what I have always striven for in my writing um, as far as YA goes. And I want to give someone else that experience. So I guess that's where I kind of sit on it. And I talked for way too long and I'm so sorry. No, that's all good. I mean, my, my experience with YA is quite similar to Justin's. You know, I grew up reading a ton of, of fantasy and science fiction that was more or less like middle grade. You know, things that I would consider middle grades, such as um, Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events or um, A Wrinkle in Time, stuff like that. But then I got to a certain age, and I think it's when I started high school, that um, not necessarily I was embarrassed by science fiction and fantasy, but I just never really um, found the books that I identified with or the people that I could uh, talk to and identify with in that regard. And so sci-fi and fantasy kind of like dropped off my radar a little bit while I was in high school. And then 
once I started university or like towards my last year of high school and then into university, I just went like straight into adult fiction <laughs> and the whole YA age sort of like categorization, whatever like category I would have been in, I guess like, you know, 15 to 19 kind of thing. Um, those years of my life, I unfortunately just kind of like skipped past a lot of the YA that's out there, you know? And all the while I heard about things like why um, Twilight and the Hunger Games, but it is more geared towards women. And that was the kind of thing where I think there was like an unconscious stigma in the back of my head where I'm just like, I don't care about vampires and I don't want to read that. Uh, the Hunger Games sounded a little bit cooler, but at the same time, it just never piqued my interest enough for me to pick it up. But then watching the movies, I realized like, no, oh, this is actually kind of cool, you know? But then so much other YA has just surpassed that in terms of, um, I guess, like, not, not necessarily surpassed in terms of quality, but in terms of quantity, in terms of the amount of copycats and things that are out there. Um, but now as an adult, now that I'm reading a lot more diverse uh, genres and everything like that, I've actually just kind of unconsciously found myself reading a lot more YA. Um, I think it started with uh, Children of Blood and Bone by, I think it's Tony Adeyemi. Tomi Adeyemi? Yeah. So that was recommended to me by a friend, and I read that, and I was like, holy shit, that's really good. But then I, I looked afterwards and I was like, oh, that's YA. Interesting. Um, and then from there, it's just sort of spun into a lot of different YA books. And to me, it, it, like Justin, it represents like a kind of refreshing diversification of my reading palette, let's say. That I can go into YA knowing that it's not going to be so aimed at at young, young readers that I'm going to be able to identify with the characters, but also like the thematic content is a bit, um, is a bit different. And we'll get into that, into that later. But I think that worked as a really good palate cleanser to sort of suffuse in between denser sci-fi and fantasy novels that I was reading. So Go ahead, you know, it's 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 very interesting that you call that you call it a palate cleanser because, you know, in so many ways, the the more adult science fiction fantasy that I read, the more I realize that, you know, for for a lot of people it kind of is because, while for me it's literally everything that I read and it's you know what I write and it's what I know and it's what I can talk about, um. For for people like you and Justin, it's it's very it's almost like an it's almost like an exercise in diversifying your your reading. So like for you guys, where you you read a, you read a genre that's predominantly written by white men, it's it's almost like you're picking up books by people of color. And, you know, included in that is YA for you guys. And, you know, for, for me and maybe, maybe you Paige, I'm I'm not entirely sure. I, I'm thinking we're kind of on the same page with it. Um, but, you know, it's, it dominated everything that we read. So for us, expanding into adult fiction is kind of, it, we're almost kind of like split down the middle, I think. <laughs> no, but I think that's perfect. We have this really nice balance between what Justin and I have experienced and what you and Paige have experienced. I mean, I'll, we'll start with Paige, um, just so you can get a word in on this. But what are your views of YA science fiction and fantasy versus adult science fiction and fantasy? And you know, based on your own experience, but also based on what we've said, you know, Justin and I finding it to be um, a good palate cleanser or like a purposeful diversification of our of our reading libraries but what has it been like for you Paige? I I understand why you would call it a palate cleanser I mean I read I wouldn't say exclusively YA but I read a lot of YA kind of 
through my early 20s. Um, so for me, I've still got those trilogies and those series that are continuing that I started reading four or five years ago. Um, and I find that I can get through a YA book in a couple of days. Whereas if I pick up a fantasy book, it'll, or like an adult fantasy book, it'll take me maybe five or six days. Like I'm quite a fast reader. So um, for me, that's, that feels slow. Um, so I know that I can pick it up. I know I can get through it really fast. I know I'm not going to get maybe bogged down in politics or big war scenes or something. Like I'm still personally finding what I like in adult SFF. Kind of, I, I've been reading the popular stuff, and I'm now kind of diversifying to find what I personally like because it's quite easy to be like, oh, you read Game of Thrones and Brandon Sanderson and like these these giants like wheel of time and i i find these series quite scary i find the the big long series i look at it and i go oh god like i like to kind of read a couple of books in a series and then move on or kind of read here and there so with ya it's kind of great for me to be able to read a series in a week or two weeks rather than a year i think it took me six months to get through all the game of thrones like i was kind of not a big reader when I started them so you know six months of my life on one series is a really long time to spend uh, just like back to back reading these like quite heavy adult fantasy books so and again with the diversity it's quite true like I think people say YA still has some problems with diversity it's still quite dominated by like white women and like kind of stories that revolve around very like western Western things and Western cultures, but it is starting to diversify out. I think with kind of the rise of K-pop and like Korean dramas being so popular in the West, kind of these Korean stories are starting to become popular. Kind of we're seeing a lot more of like African mythology coming into it. Um, But you still kind of have to search for them. They're still not necessarily the ones that are gonna be top of Amazon. Like if if that's kind of how you're finding your reads, but um. I can see, yeah, I, I think I agree with Tori. For me, it's it's a lot of what I read. and But I also agree with you guys in terms of, I see it as a palate cleanser and a way to read a lot more diverse stories than maybe I'd, I'd find in the adult kind of section. Mm-hmm. Tori, do you want to jump in? I do. I have several thoughts. <laughs> You're writing down some questions. Not questions, just kind of like thoughts, um, <laughs> thoughts I guess. Um, so, so the something that Paige mentioned that I want to talk about is the the like the rise of like K-pop and Korean dramas being so popular here in you know the in the West and and other uh, I guess more pl- places with I, I'm gonna scratch that thought because I don't know where I'm going with that thought and I don't want to anyway so books like um children of blood and bone and then um uh Ak- akita warrior i think by uh Nnedi Okorafor um and you know the the rise of all of these you know diverse voices in YA is you know something that the genre has been so so overdue for um and that kind of made me want to talk about male voices in YA because male YA writers, um, they kind of, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of how to say this without like offending everybody, but like they, they write like a very specific type of YA, I think. Cause you look at books like the maze runner and you look at books like scythe and even though scythe does have a female protagonist in it it's still like a very specific type of like i can't i'm losing all my words it's it's like kind of almost there's like the in a lot of YA, there is, you know, always a higher power that needs taken down. But I feel like in YA written by male voices, you know, it's it's kind of more aggressive in the way that it's taken down. 
you know, because like Katniss sparks a revolution. Um, I can't remember the protagonist's name in Children of Blood and Bone right off the Zeely. Um, she, she, you know, a- a- acts at the taps into like the power of her ancestors, and um, you know, I I haven't read all of the Maze Runner, so you know, I can't really, I can't really quantify that you know, as gospel, I guess. Um, but in in my experience, YA written by male voices is very different than YA written by female voices. And I think that that is also important because where in adult fiction, in adult fantasy, women voices are are the ones who are, you know, burgeoning in you know in 2021 and in the past 10 years but um I think in YA the male voices are the ones who have kind of been overlooked and um I think it's important that there's a balance in every genre of male and female voices and there's a balance of culture and there's a balance of um diversity i guess is is the best way that i can put it i know i'm kind of rambling so i'm gonna stop <laughs> no, that's all good um does anyone want to jump in and kind of comment on this the the sort of distinction between uh the domination by males in uh adult science fiction and fantasy and ya which is predominantly women uh justin or Paige, do you want to jump in on that I feel like, so I recently bought the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson. Um, Just hadn't, I haven't read any Brandon Sanderson, so it's going to be my first, my first jump into his works. Um, Don't worry, Manny, she's going to. (laughs) I promise, Manny, I'm going to read it. (laughs) Um, Didn't Manny just start reading Brandon Sanderson, though? (laughs) He's such a fanboy. (laughs) But I uh, bought that in Waterstones, so like a, a bookshop in the UK in just the sci-fi fantasy section and I had absolutely no idea that it's a YA book until um Manny and the fanfi were talking about it. Um so I wonder if there's also that thing of like women who write younger protagonists or even just women writers tend to get put a lot more into the YA section than male writers who tend to get um put into the adult section even if their protagonists are 16, 17, you know, kind of that that very traditional age. So I wonder if finding them is harder because of how they're classified by publishers and readers and kind of readers as a whole. Um, I think a lot of stuff that women write gets put into YA when maybe it shouldn't. Um, you know, there's that Sarah J Maas series, which is A Court of Thorns and Roses, that's hugely popular. Um, I think it started out being marketed as YA. Um, five books in, it's now very much an adult uh, book. It's got a lot of kind of sex scenes and kind of just stuff that doesn't bit YA anymore but you'll still find her in the YA sections of bookstores because she's a woman she's a what well, she's a woman writing fantasy and I think her previous series were YA so she's kind of stuck being kind of marketed in a way not necessarily by the publisher but by bookshops in that's kind of now incorrect um, yeah I completely agree I mean this is something that I've noticed just as I'm getting into YA as an adult is that well, for one thing, in general, genre classifications are bullshit, and a lot of them just don't really work. Um, and this goes for things beyond books as well. But I think for YA in particular, um, there's, for me, a bit of a tonal confusion from the books that I've been reading and the fact that they're labeled under YA. So for me, uh, I'll use this example because it's one that I read pretty recently is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which is a, an awesome book um, about uh, 1920s Shanghai. Um, so the setting's really cool, but it's between two rival uh, gangster families. And sort of like the setting and the, and the characters and everything, really interesting. But this book is so violent. I mean, it has violent in the title, so of course it is. But after I finished reading it, I realized, you know, like going on to Goodreads and putting in my my rating and stuff like that, that this is generally classified under 
young adult fiction. And to me, that was just like bewildering because after reading this book, I, I was surprised by the amount of violence. This is like George R. R. Martin levels of violence. And the descriptions are not washed over. Um, and the fact that this is marketed to people who are under 20, under 19, under 18, whatever. And someone's parent could, or grandparent could easily just buy this for them and be like, oh, it's in the YA section. Cool. And then their kid is reading like this violent massacre of a novel. <laughs> uh, and, and the parents would be none the wiser that this is the kind of thing that their child is consuming. And so for me, it's a real problem that, you know, Chloe Gong is a woman. And like you said, Paige, there's a lot of cases where a woman maybe based on their their publication history maybe just based on marketing because the fact that a woman is writing this and it has a female protagonist so let's just slip it into YA and that's it right but then for me it just creates a lot of confusion as a reader but at the very least I'm an adult so I can decipher what what kind of content is the kind of thing that I want to consume but for young adult fiction it's marketed at at young adults who might be a lot more innocent than any of us. <laughs> yeah. So definitely. there's yeah. been a discussion recently on um, like content tags and stuff like that. And I think that those would be so much more helpful as far as finding something that is age appropriate or um, just something that would fit your what what you're looking for specifically um you know if you're someone who doesn't like gratuitous violence or something like mm -hmm. that then there are these warnings or the or these content tags that you can look at to kind of see you know what's in the book um versus labeling everything broadly as either you know young adult or adult fiction or or whatever yeah, I mean, we could look at the video game industry as an example, even though I don't think it's perfect at all. Um, video game uh, ratings come very clearly with, you know, M, T. It's like M is for mature, T is for teen, et cetera, et cetera. But next to that, they have a box, like you say, mm -hmm. with the content listing. Violence, drugs, This nudity, contains whatever. alcohol and drug use. This contains violence, et cetera, et cetera. This may contain yeah. like uh, some form of sexual content. But for books, it's like there's absolutely nothing, you know, it's like sacrifice a little bit of cover space, just mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, because even on the back. Yeah, just yeah. on the back, like, uh, uh, um, you know, remove one one blurb yeah, and, exactly. and put it there, you exactly. know, right next to the barcode. Exactly. Like <laughs> right I, IS, barcode. ISBN barcode content rating. That's all. Yep. Because for me, it's like now that I have a son, I find it really disconcerting that it's like there's books that I want my son to read, but I very, very clearly understand like when it might be appropriate to introduce him to that kind of thing. And I feel like there's, there must be tons and tons of teens who are reading things and their parents don't know what the content is. And those kids are reading something that's like, you know, content wise is more appropriate for someone like five years older than them or 10 years older than them even so yeah like um i have, actually have a, a story <laughs> uh, that's that's related to that um my grandmother is um like hyper religious like she belongs to like a religious sect that's located in this area um where um they're like a step above amish like they're they're like incredibly religious but uh she bought me a a, a series of books when i was i think i was in sixth grade um so like 10, 11, something like that. And like the first book had like BDSM torture, you know? <laughs> and so she had no idea. She just saw it was a fantasy book with a dragon on the cover, you know? And, uh, and she, she bought it for me and I read it. And uh, I mean, it, it, I don't think it damaged me, but you know, those are the types of things that could be avoided, you know, if was there it were was it wizard's first rule yeah it was terry goodkind <laughs> yeah sort of truth series yeah i mean this is this is kind of the the tricky balance because 
yeah, your grandma bought you those unknowingly, just not understanding the content of it. But there's no indication of this. It's like you see a cover and you judge it by the cover. I mean, that's a phrase that has very potent meaning, despite its overuse. But, you know, even if it didn't scar you necessarily, um, it introduced you to things that that your feeble child mind might not have been fully prepared for, at least to understand, you know, it's the kind of stuff that just seeps into the back of your brain. Yeah. And then later on, you think, holy shit, there was BDSM in this book series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the, the book that Justin mentioned earlier, Boneless Mercies, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it's actually a gender bent retelling of Beowulf. Um, it's definitely watered down, but I mean, if, if you know anything about Beowulf, Beowulf fights naked. Like, I mean, and some of that is in Boneless Mercies. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, I would argue that Boneless Mercies could classify as adult SFF. I'd say so and, as well. And, and I want to I wanna make something clear just for our listeners that when I talk about YA I'm not talking about like the hate you give and I'm not talking about like um you know the 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 contemporary side of YA because in YA I feel like there is a very distinct divide between fantasy and science fiction and then contemporary YA because contemporary YA is very much about um especially today it is very much about um uh, social justice and you know finding and uh, not finding um representing m- marginalized groups um because in contemporary YA there is like an influx of um culturally diverse and culture culturally diverse books and books written by people of color but on the fantasy science fiction side of YA that is where you know it's very hard to n- not so much now but you know in the past it was very hard to find books written by people of color or from cultures different than western culture or you know anything like that um but you know as ss sff uh, ya grows um that that is also growing as well the the cultural the cultural diversity and you know things like that um so i just i wanted to comment on that because i don't want people to think that i don't understand the difference between <laughs> between the two so um no, know, i, mean, I it, recognize it's... It's good to to differentiate that because we are specifically talking about SFF here and there are, especially when it comes to adult SSF, SFF and, and YA, there's, there is a lot of diversity, but I think these genres carry their own historical, uh, biases and, um, discriminations and and things like that and so contemporary and and um general fiction kind of like moves in its own its own river whereas science fiction and fantasy have kind of flown together but unfortunately been caught up in a lot of the same issues over a long period of time and i think it's good that now finally um you see more diversity you know, like for me, 10 years ago, my conception of YA was just so, um, <laughs> let's say blind is a good way to put it, where I wouldn't really explore any further beyond Twilight and Hunger Games and things like that, because I was so um, uninterested in those that. I pigeonholed myself into being uninterested in YA in general. And so now I see authors like Nnedi Okorafor and Tomi Adeyemi and, um, you know, authors from different parts of Europe as well, 
Asia. Like I see a lot of really amazing Southeast Asian YA coming out. And I think that diversity can only do good things for the genres um, in order to sort of like modernize it a bit. And, and like Tori said, like perhaps play catch up with what contemporary YA has been doing. So if anyone wants to jump in. I think that for a long time, um, literature and even academia has been like a gentleman's club. Um, you know, men were smarter than women, um, you know, more successful and more powerful than women. And so we had like, you know, Bram Stoker and Tolkien and C.S. Lewis and, you know, all men um, writing. Yeah, smoking their pipes and writing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that in, in, in recent years, you know, that's obviously been, been changing a lot and, and we have been getting a lot more, um, voices, a lot more women, uh, writing. And, uh, for the longest time, I didn't even read anything by a woman. Um, I only read, read male authors. I assumed that women, I assumed that women, uh, wrote for children, um, which is, you know, so ignorant and, and, and I'm glad that, that I don't think that way anymore. But, um, I think that because YA maybe is written, uh, you know, for younger audiences in mind and as, um, you know, the younger generations, um, you know, grow into, um, you know, power and, and, and increase in social standing, they, they bring those new mindsets with them. Um, and and I think that may be that may be why we see a lot more diversification in uh, YA versus adult uh, uh, science fi- science fiction and fantasy is um, because maybe they're written you know toward younger audiences who you know have um, a much more open mindset um, for those different stories. Um, and one thing that we hadn't. Uh, touched on so far is um queer representation uh, i think it's a, like heads and tails above uh adult fantasy in, in science fiction uh yeah i mean specifically in in terms of like the upcoming ya books that i really want to read charlie jane anders victory is greater than death is way up there and i think the queer aspect is also something that um used to be this is for adult sff as well as um my experiences with ya relegated to side characters um and i think it's about damn time that that queer characters take the forefront and it doesn't really matter like what the presentation is like what the wrapping is of the story it's like if queer people can have the identification that Tori had when she was younger um, of feeling like you've found your place or relate to somebody, you know, if queer characters are the protagonist as opposed to a side character or not existing in that story at all, that can only go to benefit um, SFF as a whole, but YA and adult uh, fiction. And on that, I think that, queer normalcy is just as important. I think it's important that, you know, these queer characters aren't set in. And, you know, while, while, real, while realistic representation in literature is important, I think it's also important to have these worlds where being queer is normal. And, you know, being, being queer is very accepted and it's not even, it, it's like being straight. You know, no one, no one bats an eye. No one even considers it. It's just it just is. And I think that, you know, we're, I think we're seeing a lot of that, you know, develop as well. Um, so yeah, that, that was my thought on that. Paige, you want to jump in? I just agree. You know, YA is, is far ahead of, <laughs> of what feels like kind of the adult SFF categories in terms of representation of queer characters. And, you know, it should just be normal. It shouldn't be that this is a story of, of someone coming out or someone's self-discovery. It should just be, this is, this is the story. This is who they are. 
um not a not a secondary story because that's not true but the same way that we just accept that people are straight and that you know the person in the book is straight why can't the person in the book be queer yeah that's basically no i think this is actually i mean this is just kind of like a misconception about like what real society is like you know for for us i'm sure for a lot of people you know having queer people in our lives or being queer is totally normal such that it 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 doesn't need to be thrown in people's faces let's say um in a way that someone might react a bit negatively um but in ya in general has a lot of overlying misconceptions so i would like to know what everyone's perspective is in terms of some misconceptions that you've come to notice uh about ya and perhaps maybe you'd like to dispel them as well so tori would you like to go first so i got, I got distracted by my dogs um because <laughs> i could hear them i'm so sorry so you were talking about uh, misconceptions in ya and Okay. So I think there's a I think there's a lot of misconceptions. Um I think that YA is kind of seen as more flowery, you know, in in the popular I won't I won't say popular, but like in the in the mainstream view, I think. Um like it doesn't and, have as much su- substance. Right. Right, like it, it can't, ta- it can't tackle the, the hard stuff like adult SFF can, um, which is absolutely not true. Um, I think, I hate that I that I keep bringing this up because it makes me sound like I'm arrogant, but in in my own writing, like I I tackle a lot of really adult things, like I tackle sexual assault very early on in the book. Um, I tackle, you know, depression and my own struggles with like borderline personality disorder and things like that. And I think that, you know, having subjects like mental health and sexual assault trauma and, you know, surviving those things, I think that is very important for people because I I don't, I don't want to speak for all women, but especially around here in, you know, in our area, sexual assault happens all the time. Like, especially to young girls and to children. Um, and it's it's brushed over. You know, it's it's not talked about. And it's always swept under the rug. And it's always very taboo to bring up. Like, you, it, like it's, it's something that you don't want to bring up because you don't want to offend the wrong person. Um, and I think that having those voices in, in YA especially is is super 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 important because telling and fighting back and um you know just from my own from my own experience is very hard and it's very it's one of the most isolating feelings in the entire world um because you know you feel like no one would believe you you think that um everyone thinks you're gonna, you're lying about it and i specifically put that in my writing because tackling that subject was i, I wanted people to know that you know even though it does happen and even though it's horrible that you can take your power back like and I think that you know one of the biggest misconceptions about and I I promise all this has a point I promise (laughs) so taking that and putting it in a book that's supposed to be for teenagers is um you know predominantly teenagers obviously adults read it and you know younger children read it but you know the the generalized audiences from 12 to 18 um but putting something like that in a book that's meant for teenagers gives them a voice and i think that the biggest misconception about 
YA is, you know, like I said, that it can't really hit hard like adult SFF can. And that's just not true. Because um, The Young Elites, a book by Marie Lu, which is one of, she is one of the most fantastic authors I've ever, I've ever had the pleasure of reading. And The Young Elites is, um, it's, I think the, the culture is more Eastern in nature, but I think there are some Western elements in it, but, um, it tackles, she tackles abuse in the first pages, like, and, you know, just child abuse, just neglect and things like that. And I, th- I think that, I think YA hits harder than SFF adult adult sff in some in some aspects because i don't think it would get the same reaction in an adult book that it would get in a ya book if if that makes sense yeah and i think the the intended readership allows that that content to hit a lot harder because as an adult you become you know more uh Let's see. Desensitized. Yeah, desensitized, broken down by the world, uh, in in a in a way to put it lightly. <clears throat> but there's a lot that we gloss over, um, because we've seen it too many times, we've read it too many times, or it doesn't interest us. But as a teenager, I think those are formative years mentally, physically, everything that it might be really helpful to have a book that hits so hard, not so hard that you just like want to put it down, but it hits the right notes such that you learn something new about the world or about yourself um, and can more successfully navigate things going forward based on the fact that you know there are more people out there who've experienced what you've experienced. And I think that is a very powerful thing and something that why I'm very glad you're, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to What were you going to say, sorry? I'm just, I was going to say that I'm very glad you're so articulate. <laughs> because I spent so long trying to say what I wanted to say, and you were just right there. So I'm very glad that you could reiterate my, you know, my. <laughs> that's, my that, that's what I'm here for as host. <laughs> um, well, Pedro, Justin, do you want to, do you want to get in on that? Uh, no, no, I, I mean, I, I kind of agree with everything that, that Tori said. I mean, um, I think that, um, showing, uh, you know, younger audiences, um, you know, teenagers that they can have these setbacks and still be strong, whole, uh, people successful, you know, strong, whole people in the end is very important. Um, I feel like a lot of of YA but have that theme of, of not belonging, whether that's for any any kind of reason. Obviously going back to like the Hunger Games where it began, you didn't belong because, you know, you weren't part of the system or you didn't belong in the right faction. Um which is just I mean, maybe I'm generalizing, but no teenager feels like they belong. But you don't realise that until you're an adult and you realise that actually that's just how everyone felt and everyone's kind of pretending to to kind of feel like they belong or even that they know who they are like you know at 16 you, you think you know yourself but 10 years later you're still or you're, you're a completely different person um and YA I think especially now I feel like it's it's changed a lot since I was a teenager touches a lot more on on sexuality and mental health and just important issues that teenagers should read about and should learn about and especially like learn about themselves um you know even the rise of social media means that you know a lot more than you would have would have 10 years ago kind of when when my eye was taking off um and the way that teens use social media so things like tiktok means that they find a book they love because they, they identify with it or they just think it's a good story and it becomes viral and it becomes a bestseller because like actual teenagers think this book is is perfect for them for whatever reason you know these is why bookshops have tiktok tables now because they sell huge quantities of these books that 
I would purely market it through people who love them. And on the flip side of of social media, it can be <clears throat> excuse me. It can be a very um effective uh tool for spreading the word, marketing, all that kind of stuff. But also for teenagers, it's especially toxic in the way that they feel the need to compare themselves to everybody else because that's what social media instinctively urges them to do so they might have like a completely flawed perception of all of their peers because social media shows the best of essentially like the edited version of that person's life and you know that could include something like uh someone who has acne and uses a filter to clear their face, you know, to make themselves feel better. But then they put that out there and then everybody else thinks that that's how they look. And these are the kinds of things that um, right now a lot of teenagers are dealing with, a lot of adults are dealing with it too. Um, and then the youngest generations who are being brought up on on this technology, it's kind of a fucked up thing, but we don't really know what the ramifications are just yet. And I wanted to get into our hopes for the future of YA and what we, what we would like to see the genre do for this next generation of kids. And for me personally, it's like I would like to see YA um, provide a strong foothold for all the kids that are dealing up, that are growing up dealing with the toxicity of things like social media. And the toxicity of things like uh, loneliness or isolation or not feeling like they're part of something. Because now, a lot of the problems that we grew up with when we were the target audience for YA has been highly amplified. And I think, you know, we growing up with technology to some degree came out of things a bit easy, uh, all things considered, you know compared to this next generation who's just, you know, part of a giant swath of, of humanity who's a guinea pig for all these technologies that we have. So, and we'll start with Tori, if you want to sort of like get into what your hopes are for the future of, of YA. More. Just just more i mean i really don't have i don't have much to say more culture more diversity more queer representation just i i just want more <laughs> you know i i i hope that i hope that you know the generation you know my kid my my daughter's generation you know i really hope that they come into themselves you know and i hope that the books they want to read grow with them. And I hope that they are not limited in the way that I was or, you know, the way that, um, you know, some kids are now in what is available to them in as far as like subject matter or author representation. I hope that, I don't know. I just hope it grows and I hope that it grows for the better. I love that. And Paige, what about you? I think I agree. I agree with Tori. I hope that, so it makes reading, I don't want to say reading is not cool, but it wasn't something that we talked about like doing in our spare time when I was a, I was a teenager. So I hope that the rise of, of YA and even contemporary YA, not just not just SFF, means that that reading is a is a big part of people's lives again, and that people can discover a love of reading if that's what they have. I mean, it's a whole other conversation to have, but obviously the the texts that you're given at school don't necessarily inspire a love of of literature and a love of, of, of doesn't really cultivate maybe kind of a love of reading. Um, and yeah, just reading stories that you wouldn't otherwise have come across. Obviously, with we're talking as a as a fan of white people from you know quite 
affluent countries and stuff so being able to hear stories that are maybe even different to what the media is telling us is just so important and to have these voices represented that that you kind of would never have otherwise potentially come across um i just hope it continues to grow and it it reaches a broader audience that don't just see ya as being you know for young girls or just romance or anything i just i hope it just becomes more kind of what tori was saying basically justin what about you um i have a very probably the best way i could put it a, a very cynical outlook on most things um I don't know about the the rest of the world, but as far as the United States goes, um, our education education system is very flawed. You know, teachers are underpaid and overworked. Um, there are, are kids that are dealing with a lot of, um, you know, very hard things in life, and um, teachers either don't care or you know don't have the time to help them, or a lot of teachers are. 60 70 years old and still have the mindset that you know mental health or uh sexual assault and things like that are, are things to be shameful of and things to to be you know quiet about or um you know sexual identities and things like that um i i want i want ya to be you know a beacon for the kids who, um, you know, don't have anywhere to turn to be or to feel seen or, or to feel heard. Um, and I know that's a lot to put on, you know, authors, but, you know, ultimately, you know, it is a genre marketed towards children. And I, and I think that people do have a responsibility to, you know, write things and, and, you know, put out books with that in mind. And, and I just hope that, you know, everyone who, you know, feels lost or, or, or not seen or heard can find that, whether it's, you know, in YA or uh, adult fiction. I think that's a very, very beautiful note to, to close out on. Um, I mean, we all have, have big hopes for, for YA. And I think, you know, Justin and I, we, even though we came to YA later in life, realized the, the beauty and potential of YA in science fiction and fantasy. <clears throat> and I just, I hope that there's a broader acceptance, you know, from younger readers and adults to, to branch out a little bit from their comfort zones enough to explore voices that aren't necessarily their own and to try to get a different perspective on the world such that you can put yourself in the shoes of somebody from a non-affluent country or a country where the, the native language is completely different or the history and culture is completely different just as a way of, of teaching ourselves that the world is, is bigger than, than us, you know? And I think why is a really good point in anybody's life that age range is is the point where it's really um it's full of the most potential for us to start opening our minds and experiencing new things and exploring the world and so yeah like justin said it's it's a lot to put on authors but i think authors also have an immense amount of of breadth for which to express themselves and their experiences and the things that they think are worth telling or worth experiencing and reading. And then hopefully in turn, it's just generates a new, a new generation of, of readers who decide, you know, I read this book when I was a teenager and now I want to become a writer, you know, and become this beautiful feedback loop like Tori that pushes forward into the future with even more um, openness and uh, determination to put out good content into the world. And also just side note, 
going back to genre classifications, I really hope this is not just for YA. This is for like SFF and fiction in general. Just put some fucking descriptions <laughs> on the back of what is inside this book. You yes. know, just to, I mean, just some bullet points. We're just asking for bullet points. Something, something just to make it easier for people to make purchasing decisions, you know, so that some highly religious grandma doesn't buy her her son <laughs> <laughs> a book with bdsm in it i think that's i think that's pretty fair to ask uh of the publishing industry but you know that's that's the way it is for now but hopefully we can change things bit by bit yeah does anyone have uh, some clothing closing thoughts that they want to throw out there i feel like as we've gone through the podcast we've made YA sound like it can be a very heavy genre um, which is kind of the opposite to how we started out so I just want to say like YA can be so fun (laughs) and the stories can be entirely ridiculous and just so like out there Um, but I think we're just saying it's important that that representation is there and that you know these issues are are talked about and it's kind of the prime age to start talking about some of these things that can be really kind of that can just affect so many people Um, but also yeah YA is so fun it's such a wonderful genre to read in it is so much fun and there there are so many good things about it and I could talk for another hour about all the good things but we'll have to we'll have to do a follow-up we'll have to do a (laughs) follow-up podcast at some point once we get through all the other plethora of things that we want to talk about (laughs) (laughs) YA part two part two Justin, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, no, just, you know, I, I want people to um, read more, read outside their comfort, comfort zone, you know, experience other things. There are so many points of view, so many experiences that, um, you know, I'll never experience um, so many things that, that people, um, you know, people of color or, or, uh, queer people experience and uh different cultures that i'll never you know come face to face with that um you know i can get a glimpse of through you know reading and uh i just want people to to read read more you know read more yeah i will say that that reading is one of the most powerful empathizers that exists in the world so yes hopefully it acts as like a portal through which people can connect with something that that they're not familiar with words have power man exactly yeah well thank you guys so much um we'll uh tell us where you can find us uh on social media and everything we'll start with Paige. where can everyone find you uh so on twitter i am at underscore words of a page um page is spelled p-a-i-g-e um on every every other platform it's just at words of a page and that's most bookish platforms you can find all right and tori um on twitter and instagram i am at tori y-o reads so like a tori like an oreo but it's torio and um <laughs> that i have a i have a website i have my own like professional website so like i'm legit now um <laughs> it is uh victoriagrossauthor.com and i review under victoria gross on fanfi Attic, so that's where you can find me and justin i am at plot underscore head uh on all social media platforms um and i am also on fanfi Attic.com. all right cool well, thank you guys so much that was our panel on YA. And I really appreciate you all being here and taking the time.